Okay, in continuation of access controls and the technical access controls, uh, we, of course, have to consider uh, and, and ensure uh, that access is limited to authorized users. And, and we're going to get into the identification, authentication, authorization and accountability but um, you know we have to identify who it is that's using it and then check that they are in fact authorized to use that function system hardware software file whatever it may be uh, the uh, component uh, the system that they are trying to to access uh, to have the the use of to uh, know to you know whatever it may be um, again the the access control and different uh, types of uh, component systems um, uh, items functions so uh, now there are going to be separate controls in individual systems in in some case um, and uh, once again this is um, going to uh, run in the face of the uh, single sign-on holy grail which is honored more in the breach than it is in in the actuality uh, by and large and so uh, you know we, we are going to have um, uh, systems which we have purchased uh, which have their own access controls and um, those access controls may or may not uh, be congruent with the the ones that we have established the the ones that we are using overall um, so you know uh, it's it's possible you know and and should be a part of the uh, purchasing uh, and procurement process to to ensure that insofar as possible uh, the access control system that this particular module that this co particular component that this particular system piece of hardware whatever it may be is consistent with what we are already using uh, but in some cases you know this is what's available and it doesn't use what we use so um, you know that uh, becomes an issue it, it it adds complexity to our security and of course complexity is the enemy of security and uh, we we want to keep it as as simple as possible but we do have to ensure that the individual systems the individual components do have proper access controls that uh, we are uh, you know, managing that that we are controlling the access to all parts of all of our systems. So, um, and you know, this uh, of course, locally, you know, we are uh, determining in this particular system, you know, what what are the components of it. But you know, then then we have to talk about it in in network terms and the communications that's going on. And remembering that communication is a function as well. And so access to communications. Is that allowed for this user? Is that authorized for this user, uh, for this function? And, and, you know, do we do it on the basis of uh, the end user? Uh, you know, end-to-end -end controls in, in some cases of uh, an entire... Uh, system uh, that uses communications or are we uh, uh, limited to uh, the node and in that regard of course you know what do we do about the routers the switches the gateways the, you know uh, whatever it may be um, I mean again we'll, we'll talk about this more when we get into uh, telecommunications and networking um, and these days most of what goes on is is with switches uh, because the switches have become cheap enough fast enough that um, 
that is that's what we use and uh, you know everything uh, is is dealt with and managed at at that level uh, but you know you may have some legacy systems that have uh, some older components to them and and you know who has access to what in terms of those components um, access to applications files records um, the uh, the data the applications the um, the functions uh, all of these types of things uh, uh, we, we need to manage that access control. Um, we need to manage that access. Uh, we need to um, ensure that all the various parts, um, it, that we provide access when it is needed. Um, you know, if this person, this function, this system needs access to a component, a file, a piece of information, in order to function, we have to ensure that that access is there. But we have to ensure that the access is not provided um, in the case of people who are not authorized or, or systems that are not authorized, or, you know, whatever level of control we are doing with regard to the various parts of our systems. And all of these, you know, this is, this is all the technologies that we need to do. I, once again, you know, like I, I said uh, to start out with and have repeated, this is um, the, really the origin of information security overall. Um, the, uh, the control of access um, to whatever it is. You know, originally it was just, you know, files and, and possibly applications. Um, nowadays, uh, so many more things that we have to add to that as our systems become much, much more complex. But we have to manage the access all the same. And it is still the basic and, and fundamental task that we have and therefore all of these tools all of these technical controls that we are dealing with are our fundamentals in terms of information security